chapter 8. This is a message God laid on my heart some time back. I, I don't know, it's probably been a month since, since I preached here. But anyway, God, Steve God. Amen. But anyway, God has laid this message on my heart. I want to give it to you tonight because I feel that this message is very well needed. I really do. Let's go to Romans 8 and we'll start at verse 24. When you have it, say amen. He said Acts, but he meant Romans. Romans 8, verse 24. Romans. Romans or Acts? Romans. Did I say Acts? Yep. Well, I'm sorry. It's Romans. Sometimes I get carried away. Yeah, it's in Romans 8 and verse 24. Hallelujah. And the Bible says this. For we are saved by hope. By hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called, and whom He called, he, then He also justified them. And whom He justified, them He also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Give the Lord a hand. What can But if He's for us, who can be against us? The world can come against us as long as God's for us. But I want us to look at verse 28. And the Bible says this. This is where I want to preach to you for a little while. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. He said all things work together. Amen. Amen. I want you to look over at somebody and I want you to tell them the, the good that's in the bad. There's good in the bad. You know, the Bible said all things work together for good to them that love Him. Those called according to His purpose. But, Brother Phil, everything that's bad it's not all. It's not all that bad when it's over with. Amen. Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Amen. The good that's in the bad. Bad is bad, and good is good. And that's that's the way we always see. And that's the way we always comprehend. If something bad. What can what can good be in bad? They ain't no good in bad, but they are good in bad if we'll just wait it out. Let God bring us through. Amen. A lot of times we don't we don't see it because it's it's got us down, it's got us in an uproar, it's got us uh, in a place to where we're mining on God. Uh, but the Bible said all things work together for the good, didn't it not? The good. So no matter what you're going through, uh, always remember this. Uh, there's some good in the bad that we're going through. Thank you. I believe that uh, sometimes that we can't see it because uh, uh, all the storm clouds and all the battles and all the trials that we go through, uh, it kind of blurs our vision and we can't see, uh, uh, Brother Lee, the good that's 
what we're in. I know that uh, uh, nobody don't like to be in the bad. I know I don't. Uh, uh, but I know that there's something in it that's going to come out of uh, if we can stay faithful to the Word of God. Uh, and now I want you to stick with me just for a little while. Uh, I probably won't be able to bring everything that I've studied in and out, but I'm going to bring out everything that I can, uh, uh, Brother Lee, uh, uh, because, you know, sometimes I go so fast uh, uh, because I studied it so much, I'll try to bring out the whole Bible, uh, but it don't ever come out the way that a lot of times that we study it, but God is in control. Uh, but I want you to know one thing. Uh, I want you to understand. I want you to get a hold of this. Uh, uh, the thing that you're going through is bad, uh, but just hold on. Uh, uh, there's going to be a golden nugget come out of the bag. Uh, I believe that God has got a people uh, uh, that loves him more than anything, Brother Philip. Uh, I believe that God's got a church that he purchased uh, uh, that's going to come through the bag. Uh, and we're going to come through with victory. Uh, I believe that God has got a people uh, uh, that knows that there's some good uh, uh, that's in the bag, Brother. Uh, uh, Brother Mike, I've been through some bad things. Uh, and I couldn't see the good that was in the bag. Uh, but when the bag was gone, We get a hold of something uh, that's good and it brings us uh, to another level in God. Uh, the reason so many people want to stay down uh, where it's low uh, because when they get in the bag, uh, they forget about God. They say, what to use? Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we better hold on to God. Uh, if we're fighting hell, uh, we better hold on because uh, there's going to be some good uh, coming out of the bag that we're in. Uh, I want you to know uh, the bad thing that you're in. Uh, there's a blessing
your way. And to get us to pray just a little bit more. And to get us to go to the house of God. Just a few more times. A church every time. And this bad is not bad. And there's good in it, ain't it? Yes. Thank God tonight. Hallelujah. And that, I've got a and that God is good. Yes. And that I can hold God. on to Him. And the bad may take me out. But if I got a hold of Him, I'm going to go to the good yes. place. I'm going to walk down the street of gold. I'm going to see my heart. But I believe that God is the one the church to hold on. And not me to man. Everything bad, sometimes it don't it don't feel good, does it? Bad things don't feel good. Bad things, Brother Phil, don't feel good at the time that we're in it. But if we can hold on to it, the good's going to come out of the bad. A preacher, tell me how you're going to get a good out of bad. And when bad is bad, when Jesus is good, and I'm going to read it to you all things work together for the good. The world may be trying to destroy you. The devil may be trying to destroy you. But hold on. Hold on to the good, which is the Word, which is Jesus Christ. We're going to make it someday after a while. But I believe tonight that somebody needs a word from God. The devil is telling you that it's bad. You might as well just turn and go away. You might as well give up. But I'm going to tell you what God said. Well, I tell you what, we're just going to get rid of him now. We're going to sell him out. 
And guess what they done? And they sold him for 20 pieces of silver. You see the devil tries every way that he can to hey. stop what God is going to do. And when God starts a good work in us, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Blessing with Joseph. Brother Lee, he went through a lot. He went through hell. <laughs> he went through pure hell. They sold him out to the devil. The devil began to take him down. And they began uh, to make a slavery out of him. But that didn't stop the vision of God. And now this was bad. And probably when, he, when his brothers went back to the house, and they killed a kid goat, and they sprinkled the blood upon his coat of many colors, and then his damn baby. Could you imagine his daddy sitting there crying probably for days and weeks and months, probably for years, brother mine, because he loved his little boy. And I hear the devil come and that he was going to get him in a place where uh, this vision was not going to come true. Uh, all the devil done uh, was just promoting the vision that God uh, was going to do. And he didn't even know what he was doing. Uh, but somebody's got to be willing to say, Lord, uh, send me a go. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, church. Uh, I'm going to stand for the Lord. Uh, it's a battle. Uh, to preach a message to God. Uh, it's a battle. Uh, uh, it's a time uh, that we're living in. Uh, what we need a house of God, a spirit for the mind, and trying to overtake your mind until you how mad that you are. But here are Joseph, and they took his coat and gave it back to his dad with all this blood on. Uh -huh. No doubt his daddy began to break down and cry. Broke his heart. <coughs> he was broke down, probably wouldn't eat, probably couldn't sleep, worrying about his son, and wonder what happened to him. Wonder what killed him. And his brothers know all along what's going on. Yeah. They didn't have mercy upon their dad. He was an old man. But guess what? They took little Joseph down and began to slavery. But here, the devil was still trying to stop the vision of God. But all that he was doing was just taking him from one step to another step. Because this was bad. And now I'm going to tell you, this is some bad news. And that Joseph father's God. And his brothers knew all along what was a, a, what they had done to, a, with little Joseph. A, 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 here he was, a crying father, a, a worried about him, couldn't sleep at night. A, a wonder what happened to little Joseph. A, I wonder where he's at. A, I wonder what kind of beast a, a killed my little son. A, if I know where was at, I'd go and, a, and I would take my bare hands and kill him. We know a, a, how it is being a dad. A, a, something happened to your kids. A, it turns your mind up. A, it turns your world upside down. And this is some bad news and that Jacob got and that his little son got killed of some kind of a beast. And Joseph probably told him many a time, I wish I hadn't seen him out. He probably blamed himself for the mic a lot of times. Well, he was too young. Maybe I shouldn't have seen him out. He was probably hard on himself, but he was bad. And this is some bad stuff and that probably haunt Jacob for weeks and days and months and years. He probably could not get it off his mind. But thank God of the bad that was going on. And God had some good that was going to come out of it. But Joseph, he was took and he was sold out to the Ishmaelites. And they took him down and they gave him to the Potiphar. And here come Potiphar's wife trying to get Joseph to lay with her. And he would not do it. He knew that God was not going to permit this thing. He still stay right with God. He knew that something good was going to come out of I believe that God was speaking to him all along. Don't worry, Joseph. This is going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. It's not so bad after all. You're just exactly where I want you. I just used the devil to put you where I could use you. Sometimes the devil thinks that he's going to stand. But God is allowing the devil sometimes to put us where we should be. Who we should pray and seek the face of God. And the Joseph, he held on to his dream. And they got jealous of him. And sold him out. And the devil took him and tried to make him make him a lie with him. He wouldn't do it. So they got rid of him again. And the bad was still going on. But they were still good. Eventually they come out all the bad. And the Bible says that they went down the old Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, 
believe that God, I see God was ready to step in and take over. And there was a famine in the land for seven long years. And there was no corn in Egypt. And you can't find it nowhere. But guess who had a power over the corn? I see the good and there was in the bad. Two years went by in the famine. And there was five years until they count a famine still year. And guess what? And Jacob said, and there's corn down in Egypt. I said, Lord, I don't want you to get your sacks. I want you to get every plant that you can get. And I want you to go down into Egypt. And here's the money to buy the corn with. And guess who they run into? He looked at his brothers. He said, I'm your brother. I could just imagine how they felt when they had to come and bow down to Joseph. I'm going to give them something to eat. I'm going to tell you, old flesh right here, it will bow I'm going to give something to eat. But the good was coming out of the bad. And the devil could not stop it. My brother Mike. And the Bible says that they come down and they bow down to Joseph. And Joseph knew immediately who they was. But they didn't know little Joseph. And the Bible says that it went on another time or two. I'm not for sure, maybe two or three more times. And they come back down into Egypt to buy corn. And Joseph would take their money. He would put the money in the sacks. And it would scare them to death because they thought that the king would have them killed. But here they come back again. And when I think about the second or third time, and Joseph began to tell him, don't you have a baby brother? See, he remembered the one that said, let's don't kill him. And then he said, bring him back. And when he brought him back, he said, I'm Joseph, your brother. What you thought to me and evil to me, God made it good. He put me in a place to preserve lives. I tell you, God, it's got some good things that's going to come out of the bank. But we got to hold on to God. And may God be God in our eye until you understand what I'm going to say. Amen. The good that's in the bad. Everything bad is not so bad after all, is it? If we can just hold on. If we can just believe and trust in the Lord. And let God be God in our life. Yeah. When Samson went down to the Philistines, uh, and the Bible tells us what he done, uh, and we knew the end of the story of the, of the Philistines, uh, the Bible said that Samson looked at and uh, prayed God his strength back with God. He said, Lord, uh, let me die with the Philistines. Uh, he knew that he got good uh, out of the bad that he was in. Uh, it made him closer to God. Uh, it made him uh, uh, pray so much uh, and then he got back with God. Uh, and he would not rather just die and never lose it again. That's the way you feel. That's the way I feel too, don't you? I tell you, Joseph, he held on to God. And God blessed him. And God brought forth and fulfilled his vision. Of a church today, we got to believe that good is in the bad time. But we can't let the bad discourage us if we know that God is on our side. I believe Paul said, I reckon the suffering at this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory we shall be revealed in us. He said we shall be revealed in us if we can hold on. And there's going to be some good things that begin to happen in our lives. I believe the word says a lot of is just for a moment. It's just a moment of time. And then all things work together for the good that love them. I tell you God is a God. He will never let the storm and the trials that we go through for him or the max destroy us. But we got to trust in the word. But we got to trust in the almighty God. But we got to be like old Job. Job said, I know he knows the way that I take. And when I am tried, I'm going to come forth as well. I'm going to come forth as gold. That's been tried in the fire. And gold is the most precious thing that they are. The church listen. And they cause you in a battle. And everything around you looks bad. Hold on. But they said good in there somewhere. It's going to come out. It's going to benefit you. It's going to give you strength. It's going to cause you to get a step closer with God. Amen. And Job said he knows the way that I take. When I am tried, I'm going to come forth. 
as go did he not and the Bible said that he would cause us to, to dry up in Christ Jesus I thank God and that takes a, a word and not for everything that we go through I believe the Bible says there's a time and a season for everything and every purpose under heaven everything there's a season and a time for and there's a time to cry and there's a time to laugh and there's a time to mourn and there's a time to weep but there's all time a time to rejoice I believe God's word about everything if we can get the word of God in our heart and in our spirit and the devil can't do nothing with us but we gotta know that there's some good that's gonna come out of the bad and when they was whipping Jesus I beat him brother Mike until the blood run down his back it was bad it was very bad. They took him, put him to a whipping post. And they beat him with the whip. Brother Philip, to the blood was running down. I believe with the bloody mess, don't you? I believe that where he was just standing, I believe there was puddles of blood. Uh, that, would, that would break your heart to see uh, somebody done this way. And he was bad. But here's the good that was all in the back. He knew what he was doing. He didn't do that because he wanted to show the world that he was tough. No, sir. He done it because he loved you and me. He wanted you and I to be able to rejoice and praise him. The Bible says that the stripes was for what? It was for mine and your healing. And when the doctor says these cancer got a hold of you, you ain't got just a few days left. I believe that where mine should go back to the Spirit of God. I should go back to Crowley where they were whooping him. He said, my stripes was for your healing. That's the good that was in the bad that you and I could be healed today. And we could say, get behind me Satan. By his stripes we are healed. And when they were whooping him, the blood was running down his back. If it was not for them stripes on his back, you might not be a sinner where you're at today. Through faith believing, we got to believe that we're healed. I tell you, the devil wants to attack God's people with all kinds of things sickness and disease. Jesus knew from the beginning, Brother Mike, when they were whipping him, the hide on his back, and the blood running down on the ground. He was a sad for the cancer that's going to take place in 2018. This is for the heart disease that's going to take place in 2018. He stood then and he looked all the way down to the day where you and I at. He knew that we was going to have to have something to get us through this old corruption world before that we can ever get a rose. And we got to go through the tarns, don't we? Before that we can ever get that pretty rose. We may get stuck to a three times with the tar, but hold on. The rose, you can get it if you just hold on. I'm looking for a better place, ain't you? If I can just endure the harness and the good soldier, I know that my God is going to be right there. When we walk down the street of gold, I don't know about you, but I thank God that there's some good that's going to come out of the bad. Hold on. When the devil's trying to mock you, with some bad things, I say, devil, the good is yet to come. I praise him, don't you? Because he is a God that will deliver in a time of trouble. David said that he will deliver in a time of trouble. Hold on to the word of God until the devil 
There were times something bad that's taking place. And we can speak good. We may not be able to see it. But through the eyes of the Spirit, through faith, we're speaking victory over the top of the powers of hell. Amen. For the God that we serve. Amen. Good that's in the bad. Everything is bad. It's not so bad at the end. And Job said, I was I was feet to the lame. I was eyes to the blind. He said, I was father to the poor. He said, he knows the way that I take. He knows the way that I take. And Job went through some bad stuff. But look at the end. Why? It's because Job held on. He didn't charge God foolish. He didn't lose his integrity. I believe that he may not be able to pray like we do today. But I believe when he was sitting there for seven days, I believe that his mind was a praying to God, don't you? I believe that Job was the same God. I know this is a bad deal. I know I lost all my children. I know I lost everything I had. How in the world could there be any good come out of that? I believe that Job said, don't you? Job held on to God. And the Bible said that Job was blessed in the end with more than he ever had. Hold on, church. There's going to be a strong anointing in your life. You're going to sing like you never sung before. You're going to give a testimony like you never had before. I believe Brother Mike and we're going to preach like we never preached before. And we can endure the bad and know that the good is on the way. The good is on the way, church. You might not be able to see it, but I can see it in the Spirit of God. And the good thing is just about to take place. Don't let the devil discourage you and cause you to get frustrated. Amen. Amen. He's good and bad. When Paul and Silas was put in that old jail, the Bible says that they was whooped. They was beat. And they was put in that old jail. And there an old jail sitting there watching them. He was giving an order. I want you to watch these two right here. And they ain't nothing but and they ain't nothing but arsonists. We gotta I'm trying to keep them isolated where they can't get out and start no fire. And we gotta put this fire out because it's a spread into town. It's a it's a spreading the board fast. But here they was. And they was whooped and put in jail, in the prison. But they did stay still. And they may shut your mouth one way. But the Spirit of God in us. And we're going to sing. And we're going to sing praises unto God. And the Bible says about midnight. And these old two men. And these two Jesus. And that's the world thought it was. And when they begin to pray. And sing praises unto God. And God heard their prayer. And now this is a bad deal. And they was probably a bleeding. From the stripes that was put upon their back. And they were probably a hurting and in pain. But they didn't let that stop them. And they knew that the bad thing would happen. But they knew that good was on the way. And here they begin to pray and sing praise of the God. And the Bible said about me and now. And God sent an earthquake. And it shook that jailhouse apart. The world was a jail. He was somewhere to sleep on the light. But something good was about to take place. And the Bible says that he rose with the light of spring in the in the and he would have killed himself. But Paul said, do yourself no harm. We are everyone here. The say good. When the fiction will come out of the bad. We won't let God put us in the bad and to get the good out of us. But I tell you, God has got some people. I believe that's ready to go into the bad. That the good can come out, don't you? And the Bible says that old Jerry, he sprang up. Uh, with the light, he began to look around. Uh, no doubt they gave him orders. And uh, now if these two escaped, uh, uh, we're going to have your life. Uh, had him scared from the dead. Uh, but Brother Philip, uh, 
And the Bible says that Paul said, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. And when he come in there, he said, what must I do? And old Paul began to preach Jesus to him. You've got to have Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that that old jailer, no doubt, he was a bad jailer. He probably had a temper by the mind. He probably cussed a lot. He probably beat him a lot. But here was some good. I was going to come out of the man that Paul and Silas had been into maybe for a week or two. And the Bible says that he asked him, what must I do to be saved? And old Paul began to preach Jesus to him. And the word says that the old jailer took him down to his own house. He began to whoop out the worst of stripes out. He may have been the one that striped them, I don't know. But he began to clean them up. And the Bible said to him and his whole household was saved. Why? Because two men uh, were yes. willing to go to some bad stuff uh, and God can bring out the good. Uh, see, uh, it wasn't so bad after all. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, Paul said this. Uh, he said, I'm going to be content uh, of whatever state that I'm in. Uh, sometimes uh, when we get in some bad stuff, uh, I'm, I'm probably the world's worst. Uh, I want to grumble. Uh, I want to murmur and complain. Uh, and God uh, uh, brings me back out of a brother Mike uh, all the time. And God is trying to use us uh, to get some good things to happen. Uh, but old John the Revelator, uh, he was a man of God. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that he was put on the Isle of Pavis uh, for the Word of God uh, and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, and now you look what good come out of this. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that John was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Uh, and guess what? I read the book of Revelation. 22 chapters. God revealed it to John on that Isle of Pavis. John was willing to go to a bad place that God could give him some good. Yes. And it would benefit you and I today. Yes. We want God to save our children, but we don't want to go through no hard times to see God do it. Do I tell you, God is still God enough to bring us through every trial. Amen. We're not willing to be in an uncomfortable comfortable place. Amen. If it ain't comfortable, we don't want to stay there, do we? Do you think that they had it made all the time? No, they weren't in a comfortable place. I don't believe that Paul and Silas was in a comfortable place to you. I don't believe that when John was on that island pass, I don't believe that it was very pleasant to you. They took him over there and left him to die. That's what they were going to let him starve to death, no doubt. I don't know how many days he'd been there, uh, but I could just imagine him walking around looking at uh, uh, probably skulls and bones uh, of humans uh, uh, that was took over there and to die. Uh, and when they took you over there, that was it. Uh, uh, they weren't coming after you. Uh, they just watched for the buzz to fly over uh, uh, to get your carcass. Uh, uh, but thank God, uh, John was willing to be put on the I'm a Patmos uh, uh, for, for the word of God uh, and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to tell you something, church. Uh, understand for the Lord Almighty. Uh, we're going to go through some hard stuff, believe me. Uh, we're going to buy some hard devils. Uh, but we're going to know that he's good uh, and him the bad. Uh, and John the Revelator, uh, he knew that there was going to be some good come out of uh, when he got in the spirit. Uh, and when God began to show him the book of Revelation, uh, he began to write her down. Uh, he knew that was going to go back across to the other side. And this is going to have to be a, a spread throughout the world. Old John the Revelator, he was a man of God. And God gave him a revelation. We want a revelation of God, but we're not willing to be put in a place that don't feel good to the flesh. And God can't use us. Sometimes when God has got us in a place, I don't believe it's in a place of luxury to you. I don't believe it's in a place that you old flesh is the same. This is a good place to be. I believe a brother, a brother Philip and God is wanting us to keep our mouth shut when he puts us in a place and say, now, I've got you where I want you. Don't worry about the bad stuff that's going on around you. There's going to be some good that's going to come out of the bad. Do you see what I'm saying? There's good in the bad. You may not be able to see it now, but maybe tomorrow you can begin to see light. At the end of the tunnel, we've got to believe and trust in the Word of God. We've got to trust in the Lord Almighty. We can let nothing separate us from the love of God. What if Paul and Silas will allow their stripes 
out, uh, to cause out, uh, to be quiet. Uh, sometimes uh, we're just a little bit too quiet. Uh, the devil shuts us up sometimes too easy. Uh, but when we're in the midst of the battle, uh, we ought to be uh, uh, saying glory, hallelujah. I can see the light. Uh, but we're just all blooming in. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Uh, but Brother Phil, that's what the devil wants us to do. Uh, he wants us to speak down. We are to say, I'm a coming to with victory. I'm a coming to with the great anointing. I'm a coming to never with a new song. I'm going to praise my God like I've never praised Him before. I believe that's what old Hezekiah done, don't you? I believe that he prayed like he never prayed before, Brother Philip, because of the bad thing that was uh, taking place in his life. Uh, see, the bad, uh, it will push us uh, a little bit closer to God and we'll just let it do it. Uh, but sometimes uh, uh, some bad stuff uh, uh, pushes some people away from God. Uh, and God don't intend for it to do that. Uh, he intends for the bad uh, to get us closer to Him, doesn't He? Uh, when old John was thrown overboard, uh, them old guys uh, that Throw him overboard, and they probably hated to throw him overboard. But I'm going to show you some good that come out of this. And the Bible says that they threw him overboard. And Brother Mike, and I begin to meditate. I said, Lord, what a bad day that was for them guys. And they probably couldn't sleep that night for knowing that they towed somebody overboard. And no doubt they seen the whale swallowed up old John. I'm sure that they seen that whale come up and go them right on down. And they probably uh, stayed on their mind for days, uh, maybe for weeks. Uh, they probably couldn't eat uh, for worrying about what they had done. Uh, but you know what? Uh, the Bible says about three days uh, that's all that will could take a Jonah. Uh, there was some good things to take place. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that the will took him and bombed him up on the bank. Uh, and guess what old Jonah done? Uh, he went to that city uh, and he began to preach the word of God. Uh, and now God was a victim uh, to destroy everybody in that city uh, and everything. Uh, it was going to be wiped off on the face of the earth. Uh, but old John began to preach uh, the word of God, did he? Uh, see what's bad uh, had to take place uh, to get the good uh, come out of John. Uh, but no doubt, uh, when old John was in that city of preaching, uh, probably some of them guys that told him overboard uh, said, well, uh, there ain't no way that that's him. Uh, we threw him overboard. Uh, this is the man I here that I was telling you about. And now listen to him preach the word of God. It turned 120,000 people alive to God. And they called somebody to preach the word of God. But it had not been for the bad, they would have never repented. Oh, it was a bad deal to throw a man overboard and watch a fish swallow him up. But the good to come out of it See, God was still in control. He's in control of everything. He's in control of the birds. He's in control of the fish. God was in control of the well. That old well swallowed him up. And John thought for sure that was it. The ones that threw him overboard probably cried. They hated because they seen what happened to John. But look what good come out of it. 120,000 people got saved on account of bad that come out of that, the good that come out of the bad. Yeah. See, if the bad hadn't happened, the good wouldn't have come out of the God's sake because John was going a different direction. God said, all right, John, I'm going to let some bad things happen to you because i got to get the good out of you. You see, that's what God does. We wonder sometimes while we're going through some bad stuff, God's wanting to bring out the good that's in us. Maybe you've got a message that God's wanting you to pray. Maybe you've got a testimony that's that somebody's going to need a big sweep down the road. But there's good in the bad. And probably them guys that throw him overboard. And when they see in their eyes, probably biggest quarter saying, there's no way this could be. I believe I'm a seeing a vision. And they probably was rubbing their eyes and everything when they hear this little man preach the word of God. But thank God. And God had used the bad to get the good. And God was going to destroy everybody in that city. But there was 120,000 people who fell on their knees to begin to pray to God. And they caused God what he's doing. He's in control of everything. He's in control of the sun going up. He's in control of the sun going down. He's in control
control of the moon coming up. He's in control of the moon going down. Brother Mike, he's in control of everything. He's in control of mind, your breath. He's in control of every little heartbeat that this thing beats. My God, he knows what he's doing. Yes, we just got to go with what God wants us to do. He wants to be God. But we won't let him be God. We won't let him put us in some bad situation to bring out the good that he sees in you and I. And the devil may look at us and say that we're nobody. But I've got news for you, church. We're somebody in God. I know that my God, he lives within me. Because I talk to him, brother Mike. And I can hear him through the spirit. I talk him back to me, don't you? I thank God for the Holy Ghost that he places in our life. He wants you and I to be filled up to the brim with his spirit. And that he can talk to us and tell him what, what he wants us to do. And brother Mike, what he wants us to preach. He knows who's going to be here. I don't. But he gives us the word to preach. And we got to preach it like he tells us. But we got to lift up our voice like a trumpet and cry loud and spur on, church. And God is a coming. And they some good fixing to come out of your bed. Get discouraged. Don't let the devil discourage you because you're going through a battle. Because you're going through a trial. Through much tribulation, he said, we must enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, so that lets me know that I'm going to be uh, in some places that's not going to be comfortable to me at the time. Uh, every place is not comfortable uh, when we stand for the word of God. Uh, when we stand for the name of Jesus Christ, uh, it's going to cause us to be hated, Brother Mike. Uh, it's going to cause us to be laughed at, Brother Philip. Uh, but we've got to know that he's good in it. Uh, what if Peter uh, and James and John and uh, all these disciples... Uh, and what if they were not willing to let God be God in their life? Right. When Jesus came back, when he walked out of the old into the new, he was using these guys to preach a revelation that was going to turn the world upside down. And right to this day, there's a lot of people can't don't they don't they don't even believe in that. They don't even believe in Peter's preaching. They don't believe in Peter's teaching. But listen, church, it caused them men to be striped. The Bible says amen. But they hazard their life for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he calls them to be beat. He calls them to be beheaded. He calls them to be killed. But you know what? Good come out of it. But look at you and I today. What a revelation that we got. I know it's the right way, don't you? I know he's the one that I'm going to stand before. I know, Brother Mike, that he is my Lord and my Savior. I know that he's the one that brought Moses and all the children of Israel from the bad place down in Egypt and brought them to the promised land. He's the same God that Peter now preached so that we can have life, and that we can see this revelation, and we can know the way to heaven. And they ain't but one way. And Jesus said, I I am the way, did he not? What a God that we serve. A church, we got to let God be God in our life. Every situation that we get in, it might not be comfortable at the pleasant time. But hold on. There's going to be some good that's going to come out of the bad. And that's the mind that we got to have. Lord, we got to have the mind of Christ. And that there's going to be good come out of the bad. All these men of God was used to God. You read about every one of them. Jeremiah and every one of them. They were mistreated bad. But look what good come out of the bad because they was willing to let God use them and bring them through uh, the place to good in their lives today. But we've got to know that God is on our side. I know that He's with us, don't you? I know that God is on my side. I know that He's with me through every storm, through every battle, through every trial. And God is with us. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Ain't that what your Bible says? That's what mine says, Brother Philip. And I'm going to stand on it at you. We don't have nothing else to stand on but the Word of God. Anything but the Word of God, it's going to go down. It'll cause you to go in the town and say, what's the use? But if we can get on the Word and stand on it, we're going to come to with victory. And when God brought Moses to, 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 to the, uh, out of Egypt into the promised land, look at all the bad stuff they went through. Look at all the bad they went through to get to the good. 
See, there was good in the bad there. Brother Mike, there was a place that was full of milk and honey yeah. mm -hmm. that, that, that God was giving to them. Amen. But first, they had to go through the bad to get it, did We want everything good right from the start. Mm -hmm. It don't happen like that, church. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you, but it don't happen like that. There's going to be some hard stuff that we're going to go through, that we're going to face. But one thing that we're going to know, thank God is with us. We're going to bring out the, bad, the good that's in the bad. And God's going to use you to do it. You might say, preacher, I don't want God to use me in the bad. Well, Lord, use me because I know that you're with me. I want to see souls saved on you. I want to see people delivered from the spirit of hell on the day. We've got a spirit in the land today that's us wiping out our young generation who's going to stand when we're gone to tell this time generation about Jesus Christ. There ain't too many left that's going to preach Jesus, Sister Lana, anymore. They're all just about gone. They have but just a handful left that's going to declare that Jesus is God. I tell you, I want to declare him, don't you? Every day of my life, I want the devil to know that God it's bigger than any problem that we have. And my God is greater than any time. And my God will bring us through. He's going to bring us through the bad. He's going to put us in the good. And we can just hold on. A church to harvest is right. But the labor's true. There are few. Thank you, thank you. Amen. There are few. You can drive by the church down the road. Brother Phil is packed out. It's because... What's coming out behind the pulpit is you don't have to do this. You're it's not like that no more. You don't have to have the Holy Ghost. You don't have to be baptized in His name. Uh, you, all you got to do is just come out to church uh, and put your money in the offer when they pass it by. Uh, and just give me your tithes. Uh, and then everything's going to be all right. I uh, see that's what the Spirit is telling them today. Uh, uh, sow your seed of a thousand dollars. And that's all that you got to do. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I'm sowing the seed all right. He named George Washington. Uh, but it's Jesus Christ. Uh, and Him Christ. That's what the devil don't like. He don't like that name of Jesus. And he calls Peter and all of them to be with the me. He calls them to be put down. He calls old John the Baptist to be beheaded. But look what good come out of the bad church. There's good in your bad situation. I want you to that. Amen. 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 We can see light. Yeah. Sometimes, Brother Mike, I've been through tunnels that way out shown it didn't look like it was just big as a dime. You might drive three or four miles and all once it just opens up. That's the way it is. We may not be able to see light yet, but keep on, keep on pressing. Keep on praying. The joy is coming in the morning, ain't it? And somebody would get a song. Maybe somebody might want to pray. I don't know. The church, hold on. Don't let the devil discourage you. When Haman threatened the Jews, he threatened to kill them every one. He threatened to hang them every one until they were dead. But you know what he'd done? They began to pray again. They began to pray and seek the face of God. And the Bible says, yeah. Esther, she would make queen. And God moved on the situation. But we've got to believe in God, church. We've got to hold on to God and know that God is God. We've got to know that He's able to keep us in the time of the Go ahead, sister. Amen.
always help us one. I believe the Bible said that he said the word would not go out and return void. I was thinking about Nebuchadnezzar. Look at him, how bad. Look what a bad deal he went through. Seven years out on the side of the mountain, he crashed like a ox. But look what good came out of that. At the end of those seven years, he began to praise God. He was living up in pride. He wasn't praying or nothing. But look what he done. When God got done with him, he was praying. Yeah. Now, he was Praise the Lord. Thank God, amen, for the word. The word of us going to keep. It's all to make you feel good, amen, for the word of people. We can't use the song on the devil, amen, but we can use the word. Praise the Lord. Brother Mike, you want to say anything? I'm glad that.